be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus revealed himself to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zeb's sons and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. So Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything? They answered him, No, we've caught nothing. So he said to them, Cast your nets over the right side of the boat. So they cast their nets and were not able to pull in the nets into the boat because of the great number of fish that they had caught. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter said, and heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea, and ran as fast as he could. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the nets that were tearing because of the great number of fish that they had caught. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the nets ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come! Have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask, Who are you? Because at that moment they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them. And in like manner the fish. This was the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. We are in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus, right here on this very spot, sweated blood. This was right before his passion. It was in the Garden of Gethsemane that the realization of what was about to happen, that is, his crucifixion being dragged through the streets of the Via Dolorosa, which we walked last evening, where he was beaten, where he would be mocked and scourged. The realization of what was about to happen, that he would be put on the cross, 
his suffering, his death, his humiliation hit him right here. And that's when he cried those bitter tears, praying, take this cup away from me. I don't want this because Jesus was human like us. He experienced everything that we experience in our lives, the pain, the struggle. He was like us in all things but sin. So to have doubts, the same doubts that Jesus experienced, that he was going to make it, that he was going to be pulled through this, is human. And it's not a sin to have doubts. For if he experienced it, we will experience it also. We are joined here. And you know, nothing is a coincidence in life. Everything is in God incident. We are joined here by our wonderful brothers and sisters from India. And whenever we think of India, we always think of the blessed memory of Mother Teresa of Calcutta, Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And during the canonization process, when they were examining her life, her writings, her personal writings that nobody had access to, it was discovered that Mother Teresa, the same Mother Teresa, the Holy Mother Teresa that we think of, the model of faith and courage and dedication to God, the same one for 99 percent of her life spent doubting the existence of God. She felt for 99.9% .9 of her life that God wasn't there. For 99.9% .9 of her life she experienced the Garden of Gethsemane. That moment when it overwhelms you in your life, when you feel overwhelmed, when you feel like I won't make it when you feel like this is too much. And if Mother Teresa experienced it, a saint, that means we will all experience it. That dark night of the soul that St. John of the Cross describes in his writings hits us. But even though she experienced that in her life. She pushed forward every day. She never gave up. Because even though 99.9% of her life was spent in darkness, there was that little bit of what? Of faith. And if you have the faith even though it may be as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. And didn't she? She moved mountains in her life with that little bit of faith that she had because she trusted in God, as Jesus did too. And that's what you have to do as well. You all have faith because you are here on this pilgrimage. You are here. And you may say, well, my faith is very weak. As weak as your faith is, you have faith. And that's what God uses and will use to bring you forward. Those same words that today we heard spoken to those first followers of Jesus, the apostles that went fishing and caught nothing. And they wanted to give up, didn't they? And you feel like that all the time too in your life. You feel like giving up. Oh, I can't take this anymore. I can't take my marriage. I can't take my children. I can't take it. I can't take it. I just want to give up. 
you feel like that in your own life. They felt like that too. And what did Jesus tell them? Even if they failed, failed before your life and you feel like it's going to be a failure again. What did Jesus tell them? Cast those nets down into the waters. And when they obeyed the Lord, what happened? The number of fish that they caught overwhelmed them. They were tearing, the nets were tearing because they trusted in the Lord. And those same words are told to each and every one of us. Trust me, cast your nets, whatever it is that you need to cast your nets for. Cast those nets and when you trust God, you will never be disappointed.